welcome to Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. You'll have just seen me planting up my veg truck at the top of uh, our driveway with some tomatoes, some sort of dwarf tomatoes, bush kind, um, some parsley, some spring onions, and I just trimmed the calendula that's there. So um, that's one good job done. I did do this in April last year and my tomato plants were a lot bigger than they are now but um, that's just how this spring has gone isn't it but we've got loads of jobs to crack on with today so the job i really want to get done today is clear this bed here because it's looking terrible but it won't take me that long to get it back into shape it's not that long been used so it's just when everything has gone at this time of year so if you have an allotment that has been tilled and you've just taken over and it's looking like this it won't be so such a hard job to get it back into place so um let's get cracking so i decided to make a start by removing the old purple sprouting broccoli that was in the bed it has flowered and the pollinators are loving it but there are other flowers coming through now so it's time to take it out and by the end i get quite a pile of it which I need to put through my shredder. Then I start using a hoe to get out most of the bad weeds and normally I hand weed but today I decided to use the hoe as I thought it would be quicker but after a bit I did resort back to hand weeding. I just can't resist hand weeding. I find it gets all the roots out much easier than the hoe. I always feel more satisfied when I hand weed any of my beds. Eventually I had done half the bed and I had uncovered some pansies which I am digging up to move to the front garden and I put them around my fruit trees in the half barrels to try and make the front garden look a bit more presentable. I do sometimes find transplanting plants that have self-seeded themselves in the garden can be a bit tricky. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but I always find it worth giving it a go because it's free plants that are just in the wrong place so why not move them to a pot or somewhere else in the garden where you can see them and they give a lovely splash of colour. This was a really relaxing job actually. Sometimes I'm so busy trying to get everything done and planted out into the ground that I don't always make the time to do things like this. And actually looking at the colours that are underneath this apple tree really make me happy. So I've just watered them now. They look a bit sorry for themselves, but I was really pleased with how this looks. And I've got some apples forming. So this is a win-win really, isn't it? Anyhow, back to the bed and it's eventually finished, all cleared of the weeds and I did leave this kale plant in because it's still producing leaves for us and also there was a couple of self-seeded coriander plants so they can stay in there as well. That was a good job to have got done. I'm pleased with that because it now makes this bottom end of the garden, especially when you look out from the uh, kitchen windowsill, a lot tidier which is uh, really nice and it sort of opens up the view as well of the field because my eye was just always drawn to the, the messy bed and it means it's ready now for um, putting my tomatoes and beetroot or whatever I'm going to put in there so um, that's a good job job right let's go and get something else done the next job I'm going to do is to plant my potatoes so look they are like little shriveled up prunes, aren't they? Like little walnuts, but they should still be good. The variety is swift. They're first earlies and I'm going to get them into their pots now. I should have done it beforehand, but I just haven't had time. So it just means we'll get crop later, which might be a good thing, unless I get blight, which won't be a good thing. But we'll never know unless I get them in the pots, will I? So in my wheelbarrow down here, I've got some old compost from these buckets that I just emptied into here. I'm going to put some fresh compost in, then I'm going to put them back in the buckets, add some blood fish and bow and some potato fertilizer and then pop four potatoes in each bucket, two on one level and then two on the next and hopefully we'll get a good crop. So I'm going to do a ratio of about two, um, two to one of old compost versus 
new. So two lots of old compost with one lot of new. Mix it all up. Add a handful of blood fish and bone. Add a handful of potato fertilizer. Mix it all up again. Pop two of my potatoes in. Cover them over. Oh, look, a potato from last year there. Put down the compost, it might grow for me. Remembering now which way I went, so I did that way, didn't I? So I'll do this way now. A tiny bit of blood fish and bone in that top bit because it was all um, used compost and it'll all get washed down when I'm watering the potatoes. And that's the first one done. So I'll get on and get the rest done now and i show you the pots when I'm finished. So I've got all my pots done now. It's time to plant my pak choy and since we're in the front garden, I'll do it in the bed over here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of lime to this bed because uh, pak choy are in the brassica family so they like lime. They're not the best looking specimens but they're worth a try, aren't they? Another bed done. The next job I want to do today is to tackle this bed. 
So I've got lots of weeds in the bed, in my asparagus bed, but I've also got lots of marigolds in there, or calendula rather. And I just want to dot the calendula around a bit more evenly because at the moment they're in patches here and there. And um, I want to spread them out and also I want to take some of them and put them into my um, barrels that I've got my trees in just to add a splash of colour around the place. So let's get on with that. eventually got that bed done it took a while and I'm not sure if the marigolds will actually transplant very well um, or the calendula rather I keep calling them marigolds but the calendula I transplanted them in the past and some have taken some haven't so hopefully the majority of them will take and um, I've also put some mint into this bed in the hope that it'll keep the allium leaf miner off the onions um, so hopefully between the calendula smell and the mint smell the allium leaf miner won't smell the onions and I'll get away with growing them in this bed but we'll have to wait and see. Right, let's get the harvest for this week and then um, that'll be it. And here is our harvest for this week. Anna, do you want to talk us through what we got? Yeah, so we've got strawberries, beans, Broad beans, yeah. Um, radish. Radish, carrots, lettuce. Oh, that's cabbage. Um, that's the cabbage from the greenhouse. Um, it's asparagus. And oh, what's this? What? That's Gabby. <laughs> what's she doing in there? She better not be eating our harvest. She is. <laughs> so there we go. That's our harvest for this week. Thank you very much for joining me this week in the garden. We've got a lot done again. I'm very pleased with the work we've got. The harvest is looking good, although that's the last of the carrots now until the new crop comes through. And um, I hope the mint and the calendula keep the allium leaf miner off my onions. That's all I can do now. So um, from me and Anwen, all I can say about this week is no. lovely. Good job and take care everybody. <laughs>